Hello, this is Carrie again, and I have today, I'm going to be talking about the Faber-Castell Albert Durer watercolor pencils. Uh, they are an exciting, interesting, water-soluble media that is, frankly, extremely flexible and extremely fun. And I got the set of 60 for my birthday, so I want to talk about them and different ways to use them in addition to the ways that I've talked about in my previous video. So let's get started. They are pencil and the lead is water soluble when uh, it's soluble when wet basically and there's different ways of using them that I'm going to go into um, in a second. This is uh, one of the things that I did with them. This is almost entirely in watercolor except for a few sections that are done in marker and uh, Karen Dosh White, but for the most part, this is done with these pencils. They come in a number of different sets. This is the set that I have. As you can see, uh, the 60 colors. And if you, you know, you can use the same pencil to create, these are all done with the same pencil, so you can create light, medium, and dark tones, uh, as well as, you know, all the in-between tones with these pencils um, and I had to write in because the paper kind of shaded the kind of erased the printing but you can do that with all of these pencils sets this. of 12 24 36 now there's two 36 there is a 36 in a metal tin and a 36 in a gift box tin which comes with a pencil the gift box tin is more portable um, the set of 60, which is the one that I have, the set of 72, which I have never seen sold, but is supposedly a wood case that is fairly expensive, and the set of 120, which also come in two sets. They come in, the 120 comes in a metal tin set, as well as a solid wood set. So, those are all the sets that these pencils come in, and um, this is the set that I have that I showed you earlier. These are color indexed to the other lines in the Faber-Castell family, which means that the color matches from the, you know, polychromos, the same color name will match across all the lines of the polychromos, the watercolor, the Arbiter watercolor, as well as the, uh, pit pastel pencils of which I just have these two that I got as to sample them and try them out um, and many other you know different kinds of products that they have in those lines so let me get started and show in you my previous you. video I talked to you about how to use them on coloring book paper which is usually not watercolor paper and I showed you how to use them on this regular thin paper that well one way to use them on this regular thin paper that the coloring books typically come in. But this time I got a, I got myself a watercolor notebook so I can show you how versatile they are when it comes to actually using them on uh, watercolor paper and all the things you can do. Um, once again, uh, first thing to keep in mind is since these are hexagonal, you just have to remember that not all the sharpeners that work on the regular polychromo pencils will work on these, but um, this is, I think this is the Alvin sharpener, because um, I found that they worked on the Alvin sharpener. All right, buddy, you, you're blocking the floor parts again. Hold on, that, that's baby Stewie again. I'm not sure why he's doing this right now. Um, he just ate, so it's not as if he's hungry again, and it's not like he couldn't use to skip a few meals. Anyway, <laughs> that's not right. I reject and denounce myself for that. Anyway, so that's um, showing you how you can just sharpen them like regular pencils. Although, in all honesty, I usually have them a, a fair bit blunter than I have my regular color pencils um, for two reasons. One reason is that, you know, unlike, you know, one reason is that this is, you know, this is water soluble pigment here and I don't want to lose that pigment and I want to use as much of that pigment as I can. So that's one reason why I don't sharpen them very often. The other reason is that um, I don't really need to get into the corners as much because as you'll see, once you wet it, you can move it around and just move it to the corners that you need it to go in. So I put this together of, of some of the different ways to use them. So the easiest way, the absolute easiest way is to just use them dry. 
as regular colored pencils. And you never need to add water if you don't want to add water. Another way to use them is to use them as a kind of palette. So let me show you while I do this. I want to show you this is the first sort of quote unquote real art I've ever made. So I did this using these watercolor pencils. I just watched a YouTube video where somebody showed how to draw an apple and I just basically followed along. Um, but uh, this is how you use them as a palette. So as a palette, you just wet it here and then you take it and you can, you know, draw. So you can do the same thing here. You can take this and then pick it up like a palette. So this is an interesting way. I have seen, you know, many people use it this way. I, you know, I like that you can do this because, you know, if you have a section and say you have this and it's got too much color, you can pick up the color and deposit it onto another section before it's completely dry. So you can use that to sort of help you control the color. But if you wanna, you know, draw out, get out some watercolor paper and draw yourself a palette and then pick that color up. And then as you can see here, then you can, you know, take that color. Hold on, let me add a little bit more water. You can then take that color so you can pick up the color and take it from here and then make color blends. So that's one way you can use them. And because these are so heavily pigmented, this actually works really well um, because there's so much pigment on here on each, you know, with these, with these Albert Durer watercolor pencils, the pigment is so strong that it's really easy to use it as a palette. And if you're using uh, actual watercolor paper, um, I think, as you can see here, I think this is 140 pound paper. So if you're using nice thick watercolor paper, it'll stand up to all this moving around and it'll be really easy and fun to use it this way. So you can take a blue and a purple and make a sort of, um, you know, in between color. So that's one way to use them. Another way to use them is, and the way that I use them in the coloring books, is to blend them on the paper itself and then add the water to help you blend it. So these are two shades of purple and then I can just use the water to, and you see how strong that color is. So when you're, when you're drawing with it, you really don't need a lot of uh, pencil to get a really very strong pigment. So you can use that and blend it um, on the paper first and then add water to sort of amplify your blending. So that's another way to use these, to use these pencils. Um, the other thing about these pencils that's really, really nice is that once they are completely dry, so I did this earlier, this was some kind of um, purple color. Once they are completely dry, the color becomes permanent so that you can then take and add a different color. Although I think this is too similar a color. Let me get out here because this is a, a very similar color, um, if not the same color. And uh, Let me get out a different color to show you to better illustrate. So once they are completely dry, then you can take a different color and go over it and the parts that you've colored before won't run. So let me show you what, what I mean by that. So, okay, so let me show you that it won't run. So this is just wet and you see how it won't really pick up that color. So that's really, and this isn't completely dry, but if it was completely dry, it would be even better at not dragging that color around. Um, Cause I didn't really let it dry all the way. Even still, it didn't really pick up too much of that color. So once this is completely dry, I would say like probably, you know, maybe even overnight to let it totally, totally dry. Um, this color then becomes permanent. Um, but then what you can do with that, which is really cool, is that you can then take this and use it to layer colors of wetness on top of a previous color that you've, you know, used in the past without picking up the color underneath. So that's really cool. And that's really exciting. And you can do a lot of things with that. So if you, so if you want to, you can then take these two colors here as another way of blending them. And then you have 
a sort of trifecta of taking two colors that were dry and then blending them on top of a different previous color. So that's a lot of fun um, and another way to use these pencils. So that's uh, another way to use these pencils. Uh, so it's kind of the same thing that I did here just to further illustrate to you that if you let it completely dry, then these colors are permanent. You can see that the, uh, these at the bottom were actually totally dry and you can see how the colors are basically permanent once they're really dry. So the other thing that you can do, so there's so many things to do with this pen, with these is you can wet the paper first. So I'm wetting the paper first and then I'm getting out my color pencil and I'm taking the dry color pencil and then drawing on top of that. And that deposits a lot of pigment, like a lot of pigment you can see, and you can feel it like when you're doing it, how much pigment it deposits. Uh, the thing about doing it this way though, is you saw how I was able to blend this. When you do it this way, it's a little bit harder to blend. So if you're doing it this way, like I, I like to do this if say I've colored something in and I wanna go in and make the color more vibrant and make the color pop. So that's when you can do that. Another thing you can do, because as I said, there's so many things to do with these pencils, is you can take the wet paper and also wet the pencil. So you wet the paper and the pencil and just take a brush and then draw that way. And if you do this, you feel it, it all, it's almost, it feels quite liquid when you do this. It feels like you're, you're not even, it feels almost like you're using ink. That's how liquid it is. But as you can see how much more vibrant it is and how it gets into all that tooth and that grain of that paper. And this is just so, this pencil is so heavily pigmented that I, I've literally almost never used this message because this method, because I am so like, I don't know, I, I maybe cheap is the word, but you see how much pencil you use when you do that. You use a lot of pencil when you do that because it deposits so much of that strong, strong pigment. And I really would only use that method for accenting something or to make something more vibrant. But I'm gonna zoom this in and to show you how it did this wet on wet and how deep and rich the color is. The other thing I really, really like about these pencils is that every color feels exactly the same. So you don't have any colors that feel a little bit more grainy or scratchy than other colors. Um, all the colors will feel exactly the same and um, it will dissolve all the ink. As you can see here, it dissolves all the pigment and it doesn't leave any like grainy or scratchy aftermaths after you do that. So you can see the difference between wetting the pencil and the paper and wetting just the pencil and wetting just the paper. So you can see the difference in the intensity that it drops off. Um, they are also color indexed, as I mentioned in the past, and I'm gonna show you what this is. So what I did here is, what I did here is I took the dark indigo of the polychromos and then the dark indigo of the watercolor pencil. And let me get that color again for you. I'm gonna pause so I can get okay. that color. So I have the two colors with me and you can see the difference in the pencils, as soon as you hold them, even though the color looks pretty much exactly the same, once you hold them, you'll see that the polychromos is uh, completely round, whereas these are hexagonal. So as soon as you hold them, it's very easy to tell the difference. And you know, once you pick them up, you'll, you'll, you won't you will really be making mistakes. So I'm gonna show you right here again, sort of continuing the dark indigo that I did here. So I'm just continuing with a deep, rich, dark indigo color. And then I'm picking up with the polychromos and going on top of it a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if you can see this. So you can see here. So, so then I use these two together. And what that means then is that because they are color index, you can use this for additional effects and you can do even more things with these color pencils because of this color indexing and you'll see in the middle how the how they sort of work and you can see that you know how much color is picked up because of the vibrancy that we talked about but the other thing you'll see is that because the polychromos don't 
smudge or dissolve in water, then if you take it to just the polychromo side, you'll see how you know it's not dropping. So you can use this this ability for effects. One thing that I did in a coloring page that I did is I had a section that I did with the watercolor pencil and I didn't want to lose too much of the shading that I had done. So I went in with the polychromos and I shaded some of the background with the polychromos and then I went over over the sections that I did want to dissolve with the Albert Durer watercolor pencil. And you'll see how if you keep going, if you want to keep going and you want to pull all of this color up, you'll see that you can pull all of the color up and your polychromos color will remain. So you can use that for, you know, effects and whatever exciting and interesting things you want to do with that. So pretty much your, your own creativity is the limit here with this color indexing. Let me zoom in so you can see it. And then once this dries, because this is watercolor paper, it's actually going to take a while to dry. But once it dries, you'll see, you know, I'll come back and I'll show you all the different methods. Um, the last method that I want to show you is the wet pencil on dry paper. Sorry about that loud banging. That was me opening up this wet pencil. And um, so you saw me earlier wet the pencil. I'm going to wet the pencil just a little bit more just to show you that the pencil really is wet. So I just took a brush and I gently wet the pencil. So I just take this wet pencil and I just apply it on the paper as is. You know, with the pencil being wet and it will deposit this deep, rich color. So you can see this, this wet pencil and you can see the difference between the wet pencil and up here the totally dry pencil how the wet pencil gives you a vibrant vibrant color so the only thing to keep in mind is as before the wet you know when you wet the pencil you do use a lot more pigment but you can see on the paper that it you know it gets really vibrant that way um so you but with the wet pencil you kind of have to keep wetting the pencil and then going back to it but if you want to do some special effects and get some vibrant sections by using the wet pencil you totally can and as before, before it dries completely, you can go back in and wet it some more if you want to. So if you want to do that, you can totally do that. Um, I believe that if you use the wet pencil, once it totally dries, then it's, you know, once again, permanent once it's dry. So these are some of the many, there are even more ways than these to use watercolor pencils and it's simply phenomenal what you can do with this. So I've shown you the apple that I made. So this is the apple that I made here um, with very little talent. Uh, I'm gonna say none because I have no art training of any kind but I do love these tools and all the things that you can do with them. I did this was a, another drawing that I did and this here was two apples that I did that were basically mirror image apples of each other and you can see in real life how vibrant these colors are and how much you can do with just moving the water around and I actually ended up having to pick up some color here so what I tried to do is I tried to have an apple sort of doing a mirror image of the apple um, let me see if I can do a little bit of this here um, I'm not sure if I can do a little bit of this on camera because I have once again, I'll probably be a little bit nervous, but you know, the same idea. And once you get some water on here, you can really start to move this color around and just really get in there and just try to have the color move in the direction that you would want the lines of the, the work to be. So you can keep on going like that. and. You know, you would you would keep doing that until you were happy with what you got. And as I showed you, if I wanted to make, you know, if I wanted to make a little section darker, then I could go back in with the pencil and darken it up or I could do all sorts of effects. So you can use all these different effects a lot of different ways and you can use them in combination with each other to make you know, really interesting things happen and to really just 
you know, speak to whatever it is you can imagine and you can do this. And if, you know, one thing I would love to see is I would love to see more coloring books that were done in watercolor paper or paper that could handle watercolor so that you can then take these really exciting and interesting ideas and use them for your watercolor pencil drawings and for your watercolor pencilings and just let the ideas pop. I think this was one of the ones where I went back with the polychromos after I did it and with the same colors to make it um, darker in a section and not to lose that. But anyway, but anyway, this is just my sort of really interesting introduction to the amazing, amazing things that you can do with watercolor pencils. And this isn't even everything. There's so much more you can do with this with this medium. I actually, I got the set of 60 and as I'm playing with it and as I'm seeing all the things that can be done, I'm sort of figuring like maybe I should've got the 120, um, which is kind of crazy, but you know, maybe I should've. So, but anyway, I'm leaving you with that and I hope you really like this review. And if you like this video, subscribe to my channel and like the video. Um, there's some more exciting things coming up, so let me know if you have any questions or if you have any things that you want me to review, or if there are even more ways to use, uh, there are more ways to use watercolor pencils, but if you have more ways that you've used watercolor pencils, leave it in the comments below so that everybody can see, and maybe I'll do a part two of this video. So thank you very much, and have a great day.